Welcome back to Car Scoops. I'm Steven Rivers, and this is the 2025 Genesis G80. This week we drove it, and before we did, we asked you what you want to know about it. Today, we give you the answers. So our first question is a simple one. How do I like the Napa leather? It's great. It really is. Um, kind of bolstering in both the front and the rear seats, which is relatively rare. And very much appreciated in terms of the way that this car feels in the bins. It feels very comfortable. And the leather is a nice luxury touch that I think will wow most passengers that buyers put in this car throughout the years. Now, how will it hold up? That's going to really be the big question. Now, our next question is, how's the road noise? How does it compare to the older G80? Well, these are almost identical. So in terms of comparison, the really only big difference is that this has Pirelli tires that are made to reduce noise and vibration. But what you're hearing is the raw audio from inside of this vehicle. I haven't dialed the volume up or dialed it down. So you're hearing how quiet it is. We don't have any scientific devices in here to measure how quiet or loud it is. But my driving partner and I have been able to talk, even when I'm seated in the back and he's driving, we've been able to talk at 70 miles an hour, no problem. So, in general, I would say that this is a very quiet cabin. Next, someone asked, how does the quality compare to the big German 3? Audi, Mercedes, BMW? I think this is going to be a little bit subjective for most people. Each of those brands leverages composites, plastics, uh, faux leathers, all sorts of different materials, and Genesis is no different. It leverages similar things as well, including some soft touch foam components. It's really going to come down to what most people like, but there's no doubt that Genesis has gone to a lot of lengths to make this feel just as high quality as those brands. In fact, personally, I would say that this looks a little bit nicer than most modern Mercedes and Audi as well. BMW, again, it's going to be subjective. It's going to be up to each individual buyer. But I don't think anyone's going to sit in this and notice a giant difference between it and the big German 3. Now, someone asked, how does it feel to drive? Is it sporty enough? And I think the answer is a resounding yes. It is sporty enough. Now, it's not a hardcore sports sedan. This is not going to go up against an RS6 or an M5 or things of that nature, but it's surprisingly punchy and fun. The steering is communicative and direct, but keep in mind that luxury is the main focus of this vehicle. Even this one, the 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6, yeah, it's got 375 horsepower, but its goal is to be luxurious first and sporty second. And it does that great. In terms of the driving feel overall, I think it's fun, pleasurable, enjoyable to drive. And at the same time, it's not overly twitchy. It doesn't feel anything like an M car. And ultimately, I think that's a good thing for most Genesis buyers. I think most Genesis buyers are going to be happy with that. Perhaps the biggest question that we got is, is this now really a rival to the big German three automakers, Audi, Mercedes, and BMW? Well, again, that's going to come down to personal preference to a degree, but consider this. BMW and Audi sell sedans in the same segment for a little bit less than this. Of course, they sell them for more as well. Audi and BMW and Mercedes, they all have a wider range of cars in this segment. At the same time, none of those three come anywhere close to the value proposition in this vehicle when it comes to warranty coverage and complimentary maintenance. Genesis offers better warranty coverage and better 
complimentary maintenance across the board, really. So if that matters to you, it's worth considering. In addition, cars like the Base 5 Series or the Base E-Class, those cars make less horsepower than the Base Genesis G80. So if you care about power and warranty coverage, again, the interior is very, very similar. The quality is very, very similar. Yeah, I think on paper, they're going to be real genuine rivals. The question is, will enough people move over to this car, this brand, knowing that it doesn't have the same brand presence as Audi, Mercedes, or BMW? One of our readers asked about the new OLED screen, and certainly that's maybe one of the biggest talking points in this car. It measures 27 inches from side to side, and they asked specifically, is it distracting? Well, no, I don't think it is, if I'm honest. It's really not much different than any other infotainment system or screen in the business right now, except for the fact that it's a continuous screen. Now. Something that aids in that is the fact that it's really low set. It's not high up. It's not in your field of vision. It's low set within the dash. So if you're not dipping your head down to pay attention to it constantly, you really don't have to look at it very much. You can simply glance at it like you would any other screen and move on. Finally, someone mentioned how to find one. They said that they don't have a dealer in their area, and that makes sense. Genesis told us today that they've got 57 dealers nationwide, independent dealers nationwide. That does not count, uh, you know, Kia or Hyundai dealers where you can order a Genesis. But consider this, BMW, Mercedes, and Audi each have over 300 dealers in the U.S. So in terms of finding one, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. In terms of getting it serviced, that could be more difficult too. So those are important considerations to keep in mind. Hopefully, we've answered all of your questions, but if we haven't, leave them in the comments section and we'll be sure to answer them there.